Hey it's Amy, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I just need a drink. If you're new to my channel then welcome and I like to do videos on running though sometimes occasional music but I love to run and I love talking about running and everything related to running so today's video is all about how I choose my running shoes. I thought it might be helpful to do a video where I go over the exact steps of how I choose a running shoe and what influences what shoes I purchase. If you don't know already, I love running shoes and it's so fun to have a good rotation of them so I wanted to share with you kind of my thought process. So grab some water or a coffee and let's talk about one of my favorite things, running shoes. The number one thing that influences what shoe I purchase next is the purpose of the shoe. So what does that exactly mean though? So I have shoes for easy runs or recovery runs, speed workouts, long runs that have workouts in it, and race shoes. I use the Strava app to not only put my runs on, but also to keep track of what kilometers or how many I have on each pair of shoes that I run in. I'll go to me and then I scroll down and I look at gear and then I just scroll and see all of the kilometers that I have on each one and then from that I see oh I'm getting high up in kilometers in my easy run shoes. So then I take note what shoes are going to retire soon and since it's going to be easy run shoes I look what I have in my rotation so far. So for example my Mach 4s are pretty toast, I actually should retire them and my New Balance 1080s and my actually my Hoga Clifton 8s are the closest to being kind of near their end of life. And every runner is different, like some people can get more kilometers out of a shoe than other people cannot. And I think it, they say, I think shoe companies say around 500 kilometers is when you should really replace your shoes. And again, some people can go longer, but I do hesitate to go past that much or like a lot, a lot because you know, the cushion's designed to take the impact of running and if the cushioning is compressed down and not, you know, taking that impact, then that's going into your body and eventually it's gonna show up in maybe like a niggle or an injury or just feeling quite sore after a run. So when I'm running in a shoe and I'm like, oh, these don't feel quite as good and, and I'm starting to feel achy after a run, those are really good signs that it's time to replace that shoe. So then after I look at what shoes need to be replaced, I look at the heel drop. And I've talked about this before, but heel drop is basically the distance from the heel to the toe. And having varied heel drops in your shoe rotation is so, so helpful in injury prevention. I can't promise that it will keep you from getting injured, but it just gives your body something different to like adjust to each run if you rotate between between different heel drops or different shoes. Running is a, you know, one thing. We go forwards and it's just we overuse <laughs> the same muscles and uh, so anything we can give our body to adjust to is very, very helpful. So yeah, so the Clifton 8 is a 5 mil drop, so that's one of my lower drop shoes, though not the lowest. And then my 1080s, I believe they're an 8 millimeter drop. So I will need to eventually get a lower drop shoe and just kind of in the middle, the 8 mil. I like I like 8 mil, but I do like having a, a lower drop shoe in my rotation. So that's just something that I have to keep in mind when I go to the next step of my how I buy my running shoes. Okay, so once I've gone through the list of my shoes and realized that, oh, I need to replace my easy run shoes eventually or actually fairly soon, or whatever shoe that you need to replace, I then turn to reviews. And it's not just the online reviews, but from friends or even running stores. When I was in Toronto, I'd go to a local running store and just ask them about the latest shoes and their opinions or like their advice of what shoes to get. And also you tell them what other shoes you're running if you are running in any other shoes and they can help you like complement the shoes that you have already with the new shoe. Again, with different heel drops or different models or different brands either, even. And that was how I was introduced to Hoka because I had never run in Hoka's before and, or Saucony to be honest, I really just ran in Nike's and a little bit New Balance and then yeah, I was like, wait, wait a second, Saucony, Hoka, what are these companies? And now they're probably one of my most used 
companies or brands that I use in my shoe rotation, which is kind of funny. I love Nike, mostly though actually for race shoes, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Sometimes local stores don't have a specific shoe that you want to try on, so then you have to rely on the word of online like YouTubers like myself or more people who do reviews. I don't really do reviews, but maybe I will one day, but also just like online or blog posts or even just your friends who have run in the shoes. Obviously it would be better to be able to try them on and you know wear them yourself, but sometimes you just can't. Thankfully I have a husband who loves to watch review videos on YouTube about shoes and tech, so he watches them all and then I get him to summarize and tell me what shoes that he thinks are really good as he knows like kind of what shoes I like to run in and what works for me. So <laughs> he does all the hard work and then I benefit from that. But anyways, like he just I just really appreciate him being like both of us being so into running and nerding on shoes, but it's just really helpful to like have that person to just like talk about shoes and just yeah, bounce ideas off and also he's very good at finding deals online. So good. A huge example is like my vapor flies that I had to unfortunately get in Chicago and if you haven't heard that story it's in my Chicago kind of recap uh, video which I'll have in the description below but I yeah my feet grew etc etc so I had friends who raced in the Vaporfly 3 and just had really really good success with it and loved it and online reviews were good so I was very confident that it would work for me as well and I thankfully got to try it in the store but yeah I the only reason I really really was gonna go for that shoe is because of my friends and online. Okay, so once I've gone through what shoes that I need to kind of replace soon in my rotation, then I go to reviews of friends, online, etc. Then I considered the brands. Why I consider this is because certain brands I just naturally gravitate to for specific things. For example, I love Hoka mostly just for my easy runs, so I usually wear the Clifton for my easy run. It's also nice, as I mentioned before, it's a lower heel drop, so that's just a really good shoe that I like to always have a model of or a version of. I've had all the way from 6th and I haven't had the ninth version yet, so I'm probably going to get that eventually. But I've had really good success with this model and it's just a good one for me just to have in the rotation. I've also heard that the Rocket X2 is a really good Hoka like race shoe and I'd be very very curious to try it. I've had the Carbon X2 which I really really don't like. It's so hard and my foot hurts in it after 20k and I just I just find it so, so firm. I use it for shorter workouts because I have a couple pairs and I need to, I should use them, but oh, I just can't get on board with it. But I've heard the Rocket X2 is amazing. Have you tried them? Again, so curious. My husband said there's so many good reviews about it, but for Hoka, just yeah, easy runs for in their shoes right now. I kind of briefly mentioned this before, but I mostly use Nikes for racing. I haven't found a good speed workout shoe since I had the Zoom Fly 3, I believe. I really, really love, but I actually bought it like a size too small. It was, I don't know what happened. I also have the Invincibles from Nike, which is a really, really lovely, easy run shoe. I love, love, love. Haven't tried the latest version of the 3s yet, but I will probably at one point. But I just find that there's just no speed shoe that I have Easy Run and my race shoes for Nike. But if you have any suggestions that I've just missed about Nike, other than just using an old version of the Vaporfly, please let me know in a comment below. Saucony is actually the brand that I use for my workout shoes. I currently have the Speed 3 Run Shield, which I was really, really happy to get. And this was, I was looking again at my rotation and realized I didn't really have a shoe, a speed workout shoe that I could use in the winter or just gross weather. And I also wanted the Speed 3 version because I've had the second version and I also have the Pro 3 version. So I wanted to have the Speed 3. So it worked out well that it just fit perfectly in my shoe rotation. And it's gonna last a long time because I'm gonna use it in the winter, then probably take a break from it in the summer and then have it again for fall, winter, next year. So it's just gonna last me a while, which I'm very, very happy about. As I mentioned, I have the Pro 3, which was given to me, but I love it. I, I probably wouldn't race in it, but I really like the cushioning in it, the so light, and it's just perfect for my longer runs because it has a bit, I find it a bit more cushioned than the Speed 3 or the Speed 2 that I used to have. So I'm able to do like longer runs in it. I've run, I think in the summer I did some 30K runs in it and it was fine. Going back to the Speed 3, I just got them. So I haven't done anything more than like say 
15 kilometers in them so I'm hoping that they'll be good for longer runs as my Pro 3s you know will eventually burn out or burn out of them because I'll use them for long runs so they don't last quite as long but I don't know have you run long runs in them I just used to find that I didn't I didn't find that the cushioning in the speed was like good enough for super long runs but I'm hoping these threes will be good for those you know 30k runs but we shall see and I'll let you know New Balance right now I use only for easy runs though I have had uh, their TC trainer TC fuel cell that I really really liked. It was so poppy, a little unstable but I love training in it and doing like speed workouts in it but again it, I retired them and I just haven't found a replacement for them. My husband's been using the RC Elite uh, like the first or second second version and he's been using those for workouts and he really likes them. Again probably wouldn't race in them but a good speed workout option. So maybe if I found a good pair on sale, I would put that into my speed workout shoe rotation. I also have the RC trainers, different than the TC. Their names are so confusing, I just, I don't get it. They're like super, oh, super thick, chunky heel, but also have a plate in them. It was gonna be so excited to use it for long runs, like especially the 30K plus runs where you need the cushioning, but also need a plate because I'm doing speed workouts in these long runs, but I find them so, heavy. I was disappointed because my husband loves them and they work really well for him but man they are heavy I feel it really hard to get a turnover and they give me blisters if I don't wear tall socks so I'm really really sad because I still have lots of kilometers left on them and I just can't just have a really hard time wearing them I might use them for occasional easy run even though that goes against everything I th believe in for easy runs like no plate but I, you know, I don't want to waste this shoe either, so I'm a little, little disappointed, but I've learned my lesson that I think I need lighter shoes. I'm not a big, strong person, and so I, you know, I maybe I just, and my hamstring was kind of not happy with the weight either, so that's just something I had to learn, unfortunately, with <laughs> buying shoes, but anyways, I just, they're in theory really good shoes, I just have not had good success with those. Asics, right now I just have this Metaspeed Skies and I've been waiting, again, in my shoe rotation, waiting for a couple of my easy run shoes to retire. I have the Gel Nimbus 25s, which I'm super pumped to try. They're just, they're in the shoe box in the closet, just waiting to be opened and I'm super pumped to use them for easy runs, but I have the Metaspeed Skies, the first version. They were given to me and I love them for like, short distances because they are quite snug and I could not do a marathon in them but I really find them super snappy and I do love the cushioning in them so maybe maybe a newer version I might try doing more races in but for now I use them for speed workouts but not in the winter because they got no traction on them and not good but I do find them very snappy and I will use them in the summer for speed workouts. I know there's so many other brands out there like on Adidas etc I just don't have them in my shoe rotation I just yeah I haven't bought any yet but there are some really interesting ones so I need to maybe broadening broaden my horizons a bit but for now what I have in my shoe rotation is from Asics, New Balance, Hoka, Saucony and Nikes. And the next thing I look at is the price. Running shoes are not cheap. They're awesome. They're a really good investment and I obviously will buy running shoes but just I like to see if I can find a good deal if any are on sale and that's why I usually don't get the latest version because I like to get the previous model because um, it usually goes on sale though sometimes I do just bite the bullet in like my race shoes got the latest version. They were not on sale but totally totally worth it but in general if I can find a deal like I will try to save money that way sometimes I have gotten free shoes which I'm so so thankful for and gotten discount codes but again we run a lot so we go through shoes a lot and it can add up so and running shoes just it used to be like oh yeah just buy a running pair of running shoes and go for a run it's super cheap but uh, have you looked at running shoe prices recently <laughs> they're not cheap but I love them and again worth it but just if I can save some money by getting some discounts then I will totally totally do that. And last but not least I like to look at the color and what the shoe looks like. I asked on Instagram of you know people what they look at when they're running buying running shoes and I'm not surprised but a lot of people said the color and you know what I think that like even if you don't say it out loud I think it probably does like impact or influence a lot of 
us just subconsciously maybe just I don't know I if there's a choice between two shoes two different colors get the get the pretty shoe like you're spending all this money get something that you're gonna love and if it helps you put that running shoe on get you out that door then buy the prettiest prettiest best looking shoe you can because that's to me consistency and getting out the door is worth all the money you will spend on a shoe that you really love and that you will yeah want to lace up and go outside so even if it's on hot sale, get that shoe that you really love because you're gonna hate that shoe that's kind of ugly and it's just gonna deter you from going out. So you're welcome. <laughs> Spend all your money, no. But just think about this as an investment into your health and just for me, mental health and physical health. It's been so helpful to run and just have that, you know, the friends I've made. So rant over, but I just love running and if it, the color helps you get out the door and helps you run, then then it's totally worth it. I hope this video has been helpful in kind of going over the different steps that I do and like my thought process and what influences the shoes that I purchase. But I just, yeah, wanted to share that with you and yeah, hopefully it will help you get the next running shoe in your shoe rotation. And yes, I do recommend if you run a lot or a lot in the week to definitely rotate shoes and I can do another video about that later, but it's just totally worth it to help prevent injuries. But I love running shoes and I wish I had more so I could do more reviews, but again, maybe I'll do more in the future, but I just wanted to share these and I hope you're all doing well and running and training is going well and I'll see you next time.